we are back with more news talk. So very glad you could join us on this Tuesday edition of the Marcus County Radio Program. I'm now joined by Denis Rancourt. Denis is with the Ontario Civil Liberties Association. He's a scientist and um, a smart guy. Always great having Denis on the show. Welcome, sir. Hey, Mark. Hi. Glad to be here. Let me read one of your tweets this morning. Well, maybe a, little, a few hours ago. In my opinion, the COVID fiasco was not the result of stupidity or careerism or political opportunism or media opportunism or coincidence or quest for pharma profits or resetting to a more totalitarian society. Those are only, okay, comorbidity? Yeah, comorbidity. Comorbidity <laughs> factors. It is about pulling out and isolating. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. First of all, what do you mean? comorbidity factors. Well, I mean, those are, those are like um, collateral negative effects of what is going on, but what is going on is geopolitical. So the, the, the next tweet I had that followed up was, it was all about isolating China. And uh, because, you know, geopolitically, the U.S. has tried to take China economically by investment and by regulating its trade and so on. And that has not worked because China has remained independent, and now China is investing in the world uh, in places where the U.S. likes to invest. So there's real competition now as China rises economically. And the I think that the uh, American system has decided to take out China. That's why we had new um, trade deals uh, quickly negotiated with the immediate partners of the U.S. to ensure that they would no longer trade with China. To and that's why the U.S. pulled out of large uh, uh, global trade agreements that included China. And I think the vaccines are about creating a vaccine border, so you don't have exchanges. If if they don't have our vaccine and they don't have the health passport with our vaccine, you can't cross the border and so on. So I think it's it's a geopolitical uh, scheme to uh, limit and slow and stop China from having so much influence in the world with their Silk Road economic initiative and their banking initiatives and so on. I think it's a a large geopolitical, that's what this is about. Like the politicians are just marching. They're taking marching orders uh, in the sense that, you know, that it's been made clear to them this is going to happen. This is where the empire, if you will, is going. And that's all there is to it. And so all of this other stuff is noise, I think. Okay, yeah, I'm going to read you the second part of that, uh, that tweet, Denise. China's okay. covering up the economic slowdown during this restructuring vac- uh, vaccine borders to isolate China. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So basically, if you want to restructure the supply routes and if you want to deinvest from uh, China, it's going to slow the world economy down dramatically. So you need a cover for that. You need to have that. Uh, acceptable by the Western population. You you need to have a pretext as to why this is happening. Um, and so that's why it needs to last a year or two uh, in, in, this, in this very intense period uh, where um, large corporations are pulling out of China and going towards allied countries uh, of the U.S. And th- this, is, this has been reported by leading economists that this is happening. So, of course, they don't tell us their plans. You have to infer them from what is actually happening on the large scale. That's how you do geopolitical analysis always. But I've, I've learned from my studies of geopolitics that um, it's always these big factors that, that completely transform our lives. And there have been uh, recent examples in history, and I could go through them if you like. But this is just... Uh, the latest big tectonic shift in geopolitics that is being uh, that is being orchestrated by the U.S. system. Now, the U.S. system has two arms. You've got the the the, the Democratic arm on one side that is more affiliated to uh, uh, you know uh, large global finance and more has more ties with the CIA and has more ties with the mainstream media. Whereas the Republican arm has more ties with uh, domestic arms industry and domestic um, fossil fuel industry and so on. And these two struggle for 
having the largest relative advantage when these large tectonic shifts are occurring and they're and the, the tectonic shifts are decided by the you know what you might call the the empire itself the 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 the, the in the industrial military complex that really makes these big geopolitical decisions um, they, in a sense, decide where they're going, what they're doing next in the next decade or two, and then everything else follows, and the two com competing groups try to get relative advantage from that as much as they can. So the big pharma is more associated with big finance, is more on, the, on that arm, whereas, uh, you know, um, secure, uh, producing and making money from uh, domestic fossil fuel, shale, shale oil is now really big in the U.S., and, and also the arms industry, that, that's a big deal. And um, investment uh, through the U.S. dollar into uh, territories that you want to make money from, like Africa and Latin America, that, that's, that's part of the more the Republican uh, corporate arm. So you've got these two competing factions, but they, they agree on the big line. The big line is the U.S. controls the world uh, as much as it can. You've got this competitor that's coming in now, China, uh, uh, that is uh, deciding not to be pinned down by the U.S. dollar, that is making its, its own uh, economic agreements with, with whatever nations want to cooperate. And um, so you've got a challenger in the world, and this is what they're doing about it. Hey, Rex, who are joining us on Saga 960? But is it fair to say that China is a malevolent player on the world stage? When you're talking about the average person, myself, for instance, or many of our listeners who are concerned about the stripping away of the eroding of rights, uh, the eroding of our economic situation here in Canada, for instance, where so many of our jobs, have, have left, and yeah. so it allowed China to become a player on the world stage through entry into the world through the World Trade Organization and most favored nations deals. That we said, we said, okay, China, yeah, we want you to be a player, and we believe that over the course of time, dating back to the early '90s, after the fall of the Soviet Union, we said, well, we'll, we'll let you, you know, improve your economy through capitalist-like. Uh, um, you know, measures, you know, domestically in order that you might become a, a, res a respectable player on the world stage. And instead, it backfires because what we've seen instead is, yeah, sure, we've seen a lot of corporate profits made as companies, you know, move their op operation over there for cheap labor. And now, what have we got? We've got, like, slave labor camps making uh, Nikes. You know, so these corporations are so greedy, they can never make, you know, enough money, and so they want... It's not up that cheap later. They want slave labor now, which they are now getting, uh, you know, in China. But I'm saying it. And then out of that, we have COVID, which came out of China. I don't think there's any doubt. And I've heard some other stories that maybe it came out of Europe. Uh, the Chinese themselves came up with different stories. And so, but it certainly appears that it came out of China, that it was unleashed. We certainly know for a fact that the Chinese lied about it through their proxies at the World Health Organization and allowed this thing to spread. And so it seems to me that we were under attack by the Chinese, that the Chinese felt that the United States uh, was, you know, repatriating many of these companies going back to the United States. And so as a result of that, they fought back in the one way that they understood how, was, it was to allow this thing to spread and destroy and undermine economies in the West. Do you see anything wrong with that argument? Oh, yeah, there, there well... Um, a lot of the facts that you stated are correct, but the your the perspective and the kind of the understanding the analysis who's who's pushing who, and uh, what was the plan and what what was the U.S. thinking? You know when it 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 agreed that China would be part of the World Trade Organization. Well, what it was thinking is it it, it wanted to uh, buy investment by its powerful U.S. dollar. It wanted to. Um, engulf China. It basically wanted to take China. It 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 gambled that uh, Chinese businessmen and Chinese corporations would be so enthralled with this capitalist system that they would let go of the communist country and that the, and that communism itself would would lose its its grip on on the nation of China. That was their gamble. And instead, what happened is that uh, China integrated the capitalist 
U.S. system uh, on its terms. It really kept a strong control, centralized control of how capitalist development was going to occur um, and how how uh, Chinese corporations were going to be integrated within their national uh, sovereignty. So China didn't play, didn't didn't fall into line like the U.S. was hoping. And, and it got worse because China became a big player in the world and started investing. Uh, so the, there is now a point where the trajectory is very, very clear. China is rising. Eurasia, Eurasia is rising. It's not going to give its place. It's not going to become, uh, you know, something that can be influenced easily. And therefore, um, the U.S. is going to try to take it out of the possibility of investing and getting resources from Africa, for example, the Middle East, if it can, and so on. So it's a, it's a military trade embargo that's happening right now. And COVID is just part of that. COVID could have ar arisen any place. Uh, you, you find some uh, sick, uh, a few sick people in a hospital and you get the World Health Organization to declare a pandemic and you've got COVID all of a sudden. So it could have been any virus, any respiratory disease virus and so on. But, you know, there's another aspect to this, Mark, which is, um, I don't know if you have time this morning, but... You've got a couple minutes. Okay, well, the big, the big problem here in terms of what happened with COVID is that the transfers from ICU units, intensive care units in hospitals towards care homes is what really killed a lot of people. And so this happened in in New York especially, it's really vivid. And so the question is, to what degree were there, how many transfers like that were there? And let's follow it up in Ontario and Quebec, and let's find out how these people died. Okay, well, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we could, you know, if this was a malicious attack, by governments who don't want to spend money caring for old people and feel that these people are, no, are not productive anymore. And, you know, because of budget being strained, they figured, you know, why don't we release this thing and kill off... Um, no, I don't think it was a malicious attack. I think it, it was... Uh, they were responding to the World Health Organization actually telling the entire world, you need to get your hospitals ready because there's going to be a wave of intensive care uh, requirement that's what we're predicting. Therefore, right now, they declared this on uh, the 11th of March. They said, right now, you get your hospitals ready, which meant you empty, you make sure you have enough ICU units. And many governments, states and provinces responded by sending people from those units into long care homes, which is, a, 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 which is a, a disaster. And so that's where the killing happened. Yeah, well, that's like sending a smallpox laced a blanket to, to Native Indians. So well, you go. Yeah, it, yeah. it's it's I exactly. Mean, I agree. It's exactly like throwing matches into dry underbrush. That's what it's. That's what it's about. That's what they did. That's what they did. We have to get you on, but there's so much to talk about with you, and I'm sorry that we ran out of time. But uh, can we get you back as soon as possible? Sure. Thank you so much. Really appreciate this. All right. Bye bye now. That is Denis Rancourt coming to us from Ottawa. He is with uh, the Ontario Civil Liberties Association. He's a researcher. He's a scientist. Fascinating man to talk to as well.